which you are welcome. This is a fun little project. Say you have your Raspberry Blitz or your Noddle or your CASA node or any LND based node and you just want some sort of passive device to see that your node is up and running and it's healthy and there's no issues with it. Um, I decided just to make a little light which does that. Just so you'd have to keep checking your Zap wallet on your phone to see if your node's okay. Something which will just catch your attention. You can have in your office or you can have in your house somewhere. Um, and it's not, you know, conspicuous. You don't know that it has anything to do with Bitcoin. It's just a little children's lamp. So uh, these are like 10, 15 pounds to buy on Amazon, eBay. You can buy them from anywhere. Um, uh, this seems to be quite popular. And it's just a little lamp which you can turn on and then you can hit it and it will sort of scroll through different colors. Well, I've taken one of those and I've hacked into it, added in the SP32. And then, so, you know, if your node's healthy, it's green. So my node is healthy. It's running and it's all up to date. It's um, in sync. Uh, and if it receives a transaction, then it does a little, you know, flashy color light thing, like a disco thing, uh, which is pretty cool. So you can see when you've received some transactions. Um, in fact, I could, uh, I could do that now. If I uh, make an invoice for 10 sats on my Zap wallet. Um, so this is connected to the node my Zap wallet is connected to. And then I pay the 10 sats. Uh, and then while I'm talking now, you know, it, it's not polling our node constantly. It's doing it every three, four, five seconds. So uh, the transaction has gone through. So fairly shortly, we should see some that flashing different colors. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's just a, a, a there we go. Uh, one of the, the great things about this project, in fact, as well, is um, uh, it's very easy to set up. Once we flash the code onto the uh, the 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 thing onto the SP32, we can um, cause a access point to open and then we can configure it just through our phone or through a web browser uh, via Wi-Fi, which is quite cool. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna I'll, I'll show you the GitHub and then show you the code and then we'll put the thing together and make it. Once you've opened up the project in the Arduino ID, you will have to have the SP32 boards installed, which you can get instructions for if you go um, on the GitHub there'll be instructions for installing the Arduino IDE, um, for the installing the ESP32s into the Arduino IDE. Uh, that then means you have access to Wi-Fi Manager and Wi-Fi Client Secure because their library is packaged with ESP32 boards. Uh, you've got uh, SPIFs and FS file system is included on that as well. They're the two um, libraries which are going to allow us to write data to the memory on our ESP32. Now, um, we've got a whole bunch of variables here. Three of them are kind of interesting, and that's LND server port and macaroon. So obviously that's where you add your server port and macaroon. However, we're not going to be adding them here, hard coding them into our ESP32. We're going to um, give the data via it, the Wi-Fi access point captive portal, which the ESP32 is going to launch. So I'll show you that in a moment. Um, all Arduino um, projects have a setup and a main loop function in the setup function we start the serial begin thing here now we're we're essentially just you know controlling a couple of leds so it's pretty easy really it's pretty straightforward um if i if i show you a cathode led here so here's a cathode rgb led you've got four legs that one there is the um positive leg and then we've got three legs which can be grounded and then when you ground those legs the led will light up the one inside our pussycat is going to be like this it's going to be a little flat led same principle though one side we have ground and then this side um uh, sorry one side we've got we can add power and then this side depending on which one of these legs we ground we can then change the color of the um the led uh so we're going to say we want pin 16 17 5 and 18 to be our output pins okay um and then we're going to say pin 18 is going to be high so that's our power pin isn't it so then we have three pins left which we can say are low or high depending on what colors we want so the first thing we do is we run the pink function so if we go down to the pink function so you can see here i've got a whole bunch of functions for different colors the pink function is just saying okay i want that pin to be six pin 16 to be low pin 17 to be low pin 5 to be high that particular combination of pins means that um, being high and low means that you end up with a pink color coming from the LEDs. Um, and I've got three other ones here, green, uh, 
red and blue. Uh, oh, and I've also got Disco, which is when you get a transaction. That's when it just flashes and does all of them. Um, it is worth bearing in mind, though, there are you can get other colours. So if there's some extra colours down here in the bottom, if you want to have a little tinker and a little play, there's Aqua and there's Lime as well, which you can also use uh, with RGB LEDs. So then what do we do? We launch the Pussy Paul, uh, which is a terrible name. Um, I'll probably have to rename that at some point. It sounds like some sort of adult site. So the Pussy Portal is launched. Uh, first thing it does is it mounts the file system and it checks to see if there's a file called config.txt. If there is, it takes the data from that and it uses this to log on to your Wi-Fi and then also to connect to your node. If it can't connect to the node, then it uh, launches the Wi-Fi access point so you can you know, connect to it and then give it the information it needs to do those things. Or there is a uh, touch pin so there's an extra um, ESP32s. They have something called a capacitor pin, which means that it can sense a capacity, a capacitor change. So you can we can add a jump lead to pin four, and then for the few first few seconds while the device is turning on, if we hold that jump lead and press that jump lead, it will drop the capacitance, and then that'll act as a button, which will then also trigger the portal. So pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's basically all that. It's just that function is uh, running the portal thing um so say we've got through that and we've you know given the device the information it needs it then goes to blue which is kind of like a processing color i say i think then we go into our main loop so the first thing it does is get info so get info is just um a function for getting some information about our node from uh, LND. So this is you know one of the LND REST API endpoints, which is get info, v1 get info. Um, we're gonna see if the node is uh, in sync with the, with the chain. If it's not, then it goes pink. So as you can see here, if it is in sync, then it goes green. And that means you've got a nice healthy node uh, ready to roll. Um, and then the next function it runs after a few seconds is get on chain balance. So it's another uh, LND REST API call where it's going to um, get the balance of your on chain wallet. So if you send funds to your on chain wallet or if you spend funds from your on chain wallet, it will uh, it will know and it will do its uh, little disco thing. So in fact, where is that? There here we are. So it's saying, look, so if the balance is higher than the last recorded balance or something, then it does this disco uh, function, which we saw before. And the last one is get an LM balance. So that's your Lightning Network um, wallet balance. And if that changes, it also does a disco. And that's pretty much it. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the portal thing's the coolest, well, one of the cool things about it. Uh, one of the more complicated things about it as well. So now we're going to get into actually uh, putting one of these things together, um, taking one of the devices apart, and I'll explain, you know, how we're going to hack it. All right, so here's our little cat. I'm going to take it apart. Um, you can see here we've got our, our light. I might turn that off. It's going to be a bit annoying. Bring the microphone a little bit closer. Oops, sorry. Right, so we're just going to unscrew it. It's a really simple device. It's actually got a little controller inside of it, and I'm sure there's a much more sophisticated way of hacking this, um, where we can actually like connect our ESP32 over serial, and then like send data to it, and then use that to then you know, change the color of the RGB LEDs. But I tried it, and it's a bit tricky, and I realized it's far easier just to you know tap into the LEDs themselves. So when we open this up, what do we get? We get a quite a nice, simple little round board. We've got those LEDs there. You can see there's four LEDs, uh, which we can actually test um, with our multimeter. If I put it onto um, the LED setting, please excuse the uh, sketchy multimeter. I um I I broke one the the positive end the other day. <laughs> okay. So if I give that power and then, that's the wrong way around. So if I give that side power and then randomly prod, here we go. So I get that. So that leg is blue. That's the blue um, LED. Ooh. And then that one's red and that one's green. Okay, so green, red, and blue. Um, so they're the mounts we're gonna be soldering onto. You can see that these LEDs are actually in a parallel circuit. So 
I could solder a leg, um, you know, a, a jumper cable going to my SP32 onto this pin and then one onto the middle pin there and then one onto the, the, the nearest pin there. That would probably be the easiest way to do it because these are quite close together, these, these uh, mounts. It's going to be hard to solder them on there anyway. We've got a lovely LiPo battery in here. And again, you know, if this weren't such a lazy hack, I would be using making use of this LiPo battery. Um, and also this charger as well, because this is, you know, this is a little charger to charge the LiPo battery. Brilliant. Uh, so we could plug the USB into this and then, you know, we could, it could be a portable node monitor. However, um, I haven't got the time to look into that. So I'm just going to take this LiPo battery and put it somewhere safe for future use, because that's a really nice uh, battery. I mean, they're, they're like, if you try and buy those, they're like three, four quid a pop on their own. So there's... Um, uh, there's some wires here which we uh, which we don't need, so I'm just gonna chop those. Sadden it. I also don't need this thing. So I'll take that off. Um, it's decimating this lovely board, but we'll make it much more functional for it. I'm gonna take out the little charging unit thing. Again, it's kind of a useful thing to have. Um, it's like a little switch, so I'll probably keep that and try and put that in something. Because I want these holes in the bottom of this space here, because that's where I'm going to poke my USB through to power my SP32. Um, but because I want the wire to kind of be flush, I'm just going to use my wire snippers here, because it's a very soft plastic. I'm just going to use my wire snippers to cut a little groovy thing in there. Ooh. Try not to. There we go. No, it's barbaric. There we are. You won't be able to tell because it'll all be uh, covered up by that, you know, silicon cat thing. Right, so that's that done. And here is one I made earlier. Um, so uh, I did actually manage to get two of those jump leads soldered onto the same led so that's on on the outer pin um foot mount that's on the uh, uh the other one and then for the inner the middle foot mount thing i've um, i've had to go to another led um with the next led along and then this here is our power uh jump lead so this is connected to our gpio 18 and then on the esp32 the node mcu esp32 which fits absolutely splendidly in the bottom of this uh, device um, and is sort of friction fit in there just with the um the usb wire itself which is pretty cool um, and then i've just connected to those gpios i'll put a gpio map on the um on the github as well to make this a little bit easier for you um uh, but they're all just you know all those gpio all those jumper cables are just pl plugged into those um, GPIOs and then I've just bent them back so they fit a little bit better uh, and you can see the end one there this end one this yellow end one I've got two yellow ones which isn't the best practice but hey ho um, this end yellow one is uh, the bottom of it is sticking out the bottom there and that's because that's our capacitor pin that's the pin which we can press to activate that um, that portal thingy uh, so we can put in our credentials so I'll screw all this back together and then um, we'll fire it up and uh, flash it with the code and then put in our information. I've already flashed the code onto the device. Uh, so I'm just gonna unplug it, plug it in again. And then I'm gonna hit that capacitor pin so we can fire up the portal. So I'm touching the capacitor pin thing now. It should. I'm getting a lot of gobbledygook through my serial thing. Right, so I think it's launched the portal, even though it's not um, made of. Oh, there we are. Yeah, there we are. My my serial monitor has sorted itself out. Um, so I'm actually gonna. I'll access this on my phone. So there we have our portal. Configure Wi-Fi. Uh, your SSID and then your Wi-Fi password. Mine's really long and complicated, so bear with me for a second. Well, I hope that's it. And 
there we are, put in my macaroon and my um, my node. I'm using the standard SSL port, which is 443, but if you're using Raspberry Blitz, that would pro that would probably be 8080 or 8180 or something like that. I'm gonna click on save, and then it should, if it's if I put in the right Wi-Fi password, it should be able to connect to the Wi-Fi. There we are, cool. So it looks like it's connected to the Wi-Fi, um, uh, and uh, there we are. In fact, it's connected. Look, we can see it's green. Fantastic. So that worked. Next thing we're gonna do is send a transaction to it. So if I open up my Zap wallet, receive 10 sats, request 10 satoshis, and in fact, I'm gonna use my GoTo, which is LNT Xbox when I'm developing, pay. So, Let's try and get the serial port up as well. You've been zapped. Okay, so that went through. And we should see the requests on the serial monitor. Oh, there we are, look, and it's flashing. Cool, so now I can just plug this in, power it in anywhere near my home Wi-Fi, and it will connect to my node, tell me when it's online, tell me when I've received transactions. We have our fully functional node monitor, which I could you know, take somewhere else, I could just plug it in. It will automatically just, you know, it will know that it can't connect to the Wi-Fi and by not being able to connect to the Wi-Fi, it'll automatically throw up that portal. I can connect to that portal, put in the Wi-Fi credentials of wherever I am. And I have myself a, a, a node monitor um, to keep an eye on my node and make sure it's functioning. Uh, so really useful. You can have a whole army of these if you're if you're a big uh, service provider like Open Node or something, where I imagine you have multiple nodes running then you could have uh, a, a few of these for each one of your nodes and you can easily tell, you know, if your node goes down, it goes red. In fact, um, just to prove that, because I haven't actually shown that yet, shall I turn my disconnect, um, uh, the connection from my node. Uh, so now nothing can connect to my node and look, it goes red. It tells us there's something wrong with my node. No one can connect to it. Brilliant. Uh, so yeah, fun little project, easy to make. Uh, don't be put off by the soldering cheap as well like uh these are these are honestly like 10 pounds 15 pounds something like that and then the sp32 is another um four or five quid and then a usb wire so i oh, want some jump jump leads as well so it's about 20 quid uh great great uh, project great product you know you can probably make them and sell them um this is the, the box for the the one i bought um if you if you want to get the exact same one i bought because there's a variety of different ones out there. I'm sure whatever one you can get, you know, if it's got RGB LEDs, we now know how to hack them and use them as a, a node, um, you know, monitoring device. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you again.